Does your game feel dull, static, or lifeless? When playtesting, do you find yourself waking up on your keyboard unsure how much time has passed? If so, I have the cure for you. Introducing Animation Player, the 100% guaranteed way to reanimate your video game. Get yours now when you download the open source Godot game engine. Oh wait, there's more. Watch the rest of this video and I'll throw in the animation tree for free. That's right, two nodes for the price of free. Terms and conditions may apply. All jokes aside, these nodes are very powerful and a little bit of effort can go a long way to implementing these into your game. I'm going to show you two different methods, so let's dive right in. The first method and the simplest method is going to involve just an animation player. So we're going to flip into the hexagon tile and create a new animation player. This code base is from Project Chexers, so stick around to the end where I'll add a link to that project. We'll come down to the animation player and create a new animation, calling it on hover. And then inside that on hover, we're going to click on our mesh and create a new keyframe for the translation. We're going to change the length of our animation to be 0.2 and then click on the keyframe and click control D to duplicate it, moving this cursor over to the time frame you want to duplicate it to. On the middle key, we're going to change the Y value to negative 0.1. And then when we play it, we have this nice little dip. Now we'll head up to the node and right click on mouse entered and click on connect and connect. This will connect from our static body to our script. And then within that new method, we're gonna call the animation player dot play and the animation we care about. When we run this, we can see there's this subtle little dip happening as we hover over this. I think this gives a nice little bit of life to an otherwise very static game. On to method number two for creating simple animations. We'll flip into our piece scene here and create two new nodes attached to it. The first being the, the animation player, which we know and love, and the second being the animation tree. Now in the animation tree, we need two pieces set up. The first being the tree root, and we'll need to create an animation node state machine. And secondly, we'll have to add a reference to the animation player and the anim player. Coming into the animation player, we're going to create a new animation and we're going to call this one on selected. And this animation, we are going to go and create a keyframe using this little key here for the translation. And then we can duplicate that keyframe by moving this cursor over and then clicking, clicking control D to duplicate it. We're going to change the time of the animation to be 0.6. And then again, we're going to duplicate that with control D and then make sure that that is at the end of the animation here. So what do we want to do? We want to come up into the middle value and change it to 0.25. When we play it, we hop up and down very nicely, but we want this to loop. So we're going to come all the way over here. And on these two little arrows, we're going to highlight this and click it, which will check it to make sure that it loops. We're going to create one more animation and that is our idle animation. This isn't going to do anything for this project, but I do need to have a keyframe for the translation to make sure that we reset it when we go from selected to our idle animation here. Hopping into the animation, tree we can make sure that we activate the tree to get rid of that red text and then right click and add to new animations idle and selected and then using this little arrow or airplane looking thing we can connect the two different pieces together we're going to come over to the inspector and add an advanced condition called select this allows us to automatically go from one animation to the other animation using one line of code so hopping into the piece script here we're going to create a new method called toggle selected which will take in a boolean and then inside the method we're going to call Call the animation tree and then get out that advanced condition using this uh, little string here which is parameters conditions and then find the name of the advanced condition then you can set that to be a boolean value so in this case that will be select the last thing we need to do is make sure that we are calling this method at the correct moment and so in our hexagon script we have this line down here which allows us to capture that click on the tile so we're just going to call that toggle selected passing in true before we test this, we need to set the idle animation to start. And then when we run our code, we can see that when we click on them, they hop around very nicely, but we want them to be able to turn off this time. So flip back to the animation tree and add a new path from on selected to idle, and then a new advanced condition calling it idle this time. Flipping into the code, we just duplicate the line hitting control D and we just flip out idle for selected. And then we can simply set it to the opposite of select. Now heading over into the map script, I won't go into the details of this portion. Uh, you can check out the rest of the textures video in the link above. However, we are going to add in the toggle selected call passing in false instead of true. Running the project, you can see that we now click and they are turned off each time. These are small little animations that I think add a lot of life to the project. I'm Aramis. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.